Hello everyone and welcome. In this video tutorial we are going to introduce the for loop in Java. Well I suppose the first question we should ask ourselves is what exactly is the for statement for or what is the purpose of the for statement? Well the for statement provides a compact way to iterate over a range of values. Well let me illustrate with an example. Suppose you wish to iterate through all of the numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive and print out the numbers one at a time. How do we do that? Well, we can use a for loop. So let me write it out now. So for int i is equal to 0, i is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus, and then the body of our for loop, we simply print out the value of i. System.out.println i is and i. Okay. Let me begin by explaining step by step exactly how this works. So the for loop, the for loop header, and what I'm highlighting here, this is the for loop header. This consists of three components, each component separated or delineated by a semicolon. So in fact I'll write it out in English so it's very clear. The first component is called is called the initialization initial initialization statement. The second component is called the termination statement and the third and last component is called the increment statement. So in simple English, let me just comment those because these are this isn't actually code. Logically speaking, these are the three components of the four statement. The initialization component, this part here, consists of a declaration of a variable i, an integer, and an initialization. So i is both declared and initialized to zero. So this is the very first component of the, the header of the for loop. Now the first thing to note is that the initialization statement is only ever executed once and once only. And it is executed whenever we enter the for loop for the very first time. It is never referred to thereafter. Okay, so that's the first thing to note. The second component of a for loop header is the termination uh, expression. And this expression is either evaluates to true or false. So if this expression evaluates to true, then immediately all of the statements inside the body of the for loop are executed. And the body of the for loop, or more formally is known as the scope of the for loop, are all statements between the open curly brace and the closed curly brace. So when we evaluate the termination expression, which will have a Boolean value, it'll either be true or false. If it is true, the very next thing that happens is that all of the statements inside the body of the for loop are executed. Whenever the termination expression evaluates to false, then we exit the for loop and continue on running whatever statements appear after the for loop. In our case here, we have no more appearing. Okay, so that's the termination expression. The third component of the for loop header is called the increment expression. Now it actually is increment logically. As it happens we have a technical increment here but it doesn't necessarily have to be an increment. It could be any other statement. For example we could say i is equal to i plus 2 uh, or i is equal to i plus 3, whatever. We can use any valid expression. So I'll just use what I originally had for the moment. Now the key point about the increment expression is logically the increment expression should perform a computation that will at some point result in the termination expression evaluating to false. If as a result of executing the increment expression continually we never arrive at a point where the termination expression evaluates to false then it will result in an infinite loop running. I will show you an example of this shortly. So let us recap. What logically happens when we run or enter a for loop? Well, the very first thing that happens is that the initialization statement is executed. So a variable i is declared and initialized to zero. This is never referred to again. The very next thing that happens is the termination expression is evaluated. 
if i is less than or equal to 10, if this evaluates to true, then the very next thing that happens is all of the statements inside the body of the for loop are executed. So in our case, yes, 0 is less than or equal to 10, therefore system.println line is executed. So let's just highlight what's displayed. i is and it's printed at 0. So after executing all of the statements inside the body of the for loop, it ends. So the very next thing that happens is we jump back up to the for loop header and the increment statement, or the increment condition, or statement is a better word, expression, is executed. So in this case, our increment expression consists of incrementing i by 1. So i now becomes 1. The very next thing that happens is that we evaluate the termination expression in light of our increment. So is 1 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. Then we execute all of the statements inside the body of the for loop. So this time we now have i is equal to 1. Then again, it just keeps repeating. Like we loop around, increment, we execute the increment expression. i is now 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. Then we execute all of the statements inside the body of the for loop. So now we have i is equal to 2, and so on. So it keeps looping around until eventually we get to the point where i is equal to 10, and we will print out i is 10. Then we will loop back around. The increment expression is evaluated. i now becomes 11. We then evaluate the termination condition. Is 11 less than or equal to 10? No, it is not. So at this point, we exit the for loop, and the Java virtual machine continues processing whatever statements come after the for loop. Now, as it happens, we have no statements, hence the program will exit. I will now compile and run the program to demonstrate the expected output. So compile and run, and as you can see, it's compiled successfully, and then it printed out i is equal to 0, i is 1, all the way up to i is equal to 10 inclusive. So that is exactly what we expected to happen. Okay, so let me just tidy up this before I continue on. Okay, I now wish to highlight some potential pitfalls and issues that you should be aware of when using or writing for loops. I suppose the first one, the most important one, I suppose, is the initialization statement. So we have declared and initialized a variable i within the header of the for loop. So this is very important to note. Precisely because we have declared and initialized it within the header of the for loop, this variable i, as a result, is only accessible to statements within the body of the for loop, i.e. to all statements within the open and curly brace of the for loop. So if I try to now print out the value of i from outside, in fact, do you know what, it'd be just as quick to cut and paste the statement here. If I try to print out the value of i outside the for loop, this won't compile. So let me demonstrate. Compile Java. And as you can see, I have an error. And the error message is on line 12, which is correct, this is line 12, and it says cannot find symbol i, variable i, one error. And that's precisely because the variable i actually no longer exists at this point in the program. i only exists within the scope of the for loop. So, what's the lesson to learn here? The lesson to be aware of is that if ever we need to refer to the variable i or any variable that we access inside the for loop, and in this case i is like an index position, we must declare i outside the for loop. So, what should we do here? What we could do is the following. Um, I'm going to demonstrate two things here. Kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. and and i is equal to 0. I beg your pardon. So if you notice, I actually haven't declared initialization statement, or I've left a blank. This is actually perfectly valid. So if I now run this, what do I expect to happen? Well, it'll print out from i is equal to 1 to 10 inclusive. Then it will increment i, so i will now be 11. It will fail the termination condition. It will exit the for loop, and then it should print out i is 11. So let's have a look. Compile and run. And as you can see, it compiled successfully and it printed out i is 0, i is 1, all the way to, and as I said, inclusive i is 11. So it printed out i is 10, up to i is 10 here. It incremented i, i is now 11. It then failed the termination condition, exited the for loop, and then printed out the current value of i, which is now 11. The second pitfall I wish to point out is the following. 
we are not actually required to provide any initialization, termination, or increment statements. The following code, although, look, that, although looking very unusual, is valid. We have no initialization, no termination, and no increment statements. So what exactly happens here? What will happen is that this will produce what we call an infinite loop. This for loop or one will run and will never exit. So in 99% of cases, this would be a logical error. Now, there are valid cases when you might want to write code like this. For example, in event pro event driven programming such as GUI programming. However, that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So 99% of the time, you would not want to do something like this. So I want to point this out. And I just want to verify, demonstrate that in fact, this does indeed compile successfully. Oops, unreachable code, yes, sorry. This is, this is irrelevant to the point I want to demonstrate. So this is our example code here. Let me tidy up by just getting rid of this here. And I think I can get rid of this now here. Um, so we'll just tidy up the code. So I will now compile this. And as you can see, it compiles successfully. I could run it, but it would just simply run forever and I'd have to hit control C to exit. But that is the second pitfall I want you to be aware of. The third point I want to highlight is that we don't necessarily have to increment up. For example, I can declare int i is equal to 10. Um, the, term, the termination condition i is greater than or equal to, excuse me, 0. And then i minus minus. So what's hap what should happen here is that we initialize, declare and initialize i to 10. Let me get rid of that. Then we verify that i, as a termination condition, that i is greater than or equal to 0. And then the increment condition is actually a decrement of i. And so, and then we simply print out i. So what should happen in this case is that we print out i is 10, i is 9, i is 8, all the way down to i is 0. So let me compile and run this and demonstrate that. And as you can see, it's compiled successfully, and then we print out i is 10, i is 9, i is 8, all the way down to i is 0. This is exactly our expected output. So the point I want to show you here, it doesn't necessarily have to be an increment. It can be a decrement. As it happens, this scenario is also a good example in which I can illustrate a potential bug that many beginners may make. So just to recall, I've initialized i to 10. I check the termination condition is i greater than or equal to 0, and then I decrement i. Now what if, instead of decrementing i, I increment i? So i will never get close to the termination condition. The termination condition is 0. We're incrementing i, which means we go from 10 to 11, 12, and so on. i is getting bigger, not smaller, which means we will never, whenever this sorry, termination condition is evaluated, it will never evaluate the true. Should I say, it'll never evaluate the false, I beg your pardon, because i will always be greater than 0. So let me demonstrate it. Compile and run. And as you can see here, it's just incrementing. And in fact, this program is a form of an infinite loop. It will run on forever. Now, in practice, it will actually crash at some point when the heap overflows. But as you can see, if our increment condition never results in the termination condition, evaluation to false, the for loop will execute continuously as demonstrated here. So I'm going to just press Control C to end this. First click here, Control C, and the process is being terminated. Okay, I just wanted to show you that example there. The last point I want to highlight is that the, the logical increments component of the for statement header doesn't actually have to be a direct increment or decrement. For example, here, what we should have had was i minus minus, but I could have equally written i is equal to i minus 2, for example, or i minus 5, or any other valid expression. It can be any expression, as long as it will result at some point in the termination condition evaluation to false. So let's, let's put what we originally had, i minus minus, and I'll just, com I'll just run that now to demonstrate. And our expected output is printed at i is equal to 10, 9, 8, all the way down to i is equal to 1. So let me change this now and say i is equal to i minus 2, for example. And let's run the program. Compile and run. And oops, I had an error. What is my error? For loop expected. Sorry, I've got a typo. Sorry, I beg your pardon. And uh, let me compile and run that again. 
and this time it's compiled and runs successfully. And instead of 109876, we have 108642 and 0. So the increment uh, expression in this case is technically a decrement by 2. But the key point I want to show you is we can use any valid expression here as long as it will result at some point in the termination condition evaluation to false. So I hope this video has been of use and has been a benefit to you. Thank you very much for watching.